music that can set a tone. That is what Kevin Penkin has brought on to Shield Hero, an anime that should have failed because of the glaring amount of problems that has accumulated throughout its run. Issues such as its lacking of an engaging story, not having interesting and layered characters with reasons to do the things they do, and a production that isn't up to the standards that Kenma Citrus has set for themselves with their previous works. The reason I feel as though this show hasn't totally hit rock bottom or been seen as a complete waste of time during its run is because of the life Kevin's music has brought to it, something that has always been blissful to the ears. I've been starting to see the way Shield Hero's soundtrack has affected and lifted the show's quality like something similar to the way Hiroyuki Sawano's music would do for a lot of the hype action anime to come out over the years. Even though the story wasn't always hitting those beats to get you mostly invested, Sawano's music would almost rip out what feeling it had in it with its energetic and bombastic flair, always doing its absolute best to get you to feel what you were meant to in those moments. Similarly to him, the music Kevin Penkin has created to support Tata no Yusha has the same effect. Where Sawano's soundtracks and anime are mostly used as tools to elevate a scene's intensity, Kevin's has a more all-around approach, and that his music serves a lot more purposes when played during key points in a scene. Don't believe me? Just ask the director himself, Tako Abo. I bet he knows just how valuable his music composer is to it. Tako even admits this to a certain extent in an interview that Keiko Cat had with him at Anime Central 2019. When asked about the role of director and just what parts he was responsible for, he said this. So with Rising of the Shield Hero, I really felt it was important to create this fantasy world, and that means creating that world visually, in terms of colors. Kevin Penkin, who did the music and who's here with me today, was also integral to that process too. I'd even go so far as saying as the music was the main point. I mean, since the very first episode, he had already placed Kevin Penkin's OST in a couple of montages with very little to no dialogue putting it on spotlight to create the sense that something was going good, but that progress was being made. Even in that very same episode when he placed one of Penguin's more dramatic tracks at the high point of it, in hopes that it would take us along the way of understanding just how the shield hero felt after being betrayed by his one and only party member, we got to see even further just how much impact Kevin's music could really have. Emotions and confusion running through now from his head, Kevin chose to convey this by using a chaotic electronic track with beats flying back and forth as if it were the thoughts and dark feelings culminating through now from his soul. Tracks like these are what give a lot of weight and emotion to the darker aspects of the show. If you ask me what Kevin did best between his more somber and atmospheric pieces used to set a tone of a new setting, or his morbid and uncomfortable tracks made to add a chilling and frightening effect to a scene, I wouldn't be able to pick. He does both things so well in every context and somehow keeps producing the same amount of high quality music on every track that I'd even go so far as saying as he's a master at both. But aside from giving a hand and making a scene more dramatic or adding color to an atmosphere of a world, a lot of Pinkin's tracks on Shield Hero do a great job of guiding a fight when presented. He understands when things are supposed to get tense in an action scene, he has to change his more soft style of music to something more rapid to help elevate the feeling of stakes. This becomes especially important for an anime like Shield Hero because a lot of the times it's hard to get engaged into any altercation between characters because of the stupid shit that goes on during or before it. What is that stupid shit you might ask? Well, here are your culprits. Mine and Motoyasu the idiot for the sin of harassing Naofumi for no reason, and the sword and bow hero for amounting to nothing more than mindless douchebags. This group of unlikable characters are constantly being inserted into the spaces in which the shield hero inhabits, and every single time it happens, there is another argument between them. We're always hearing the same things, same insults, same accusations, same boring jokes. It's become devastatingly awkward and tension zapping when it happens. Which is why so many of the fight scenes are hard to get through when you see the same stupid faces put together again. But this just adds more to my point of what Kevin brings to the table when setting a tone. His quickly paced and perfectly timed beats or sound of the string instruments he loves is most of what you'll hear when a fight scene occurs. 
they aren't as bombastic as the battle music we get from Sawano, but the fast melody of sounds as the music starts playing do get your heart and mind pumping, simulating the feeling of what it would be like if the actual contents of the battle had stakes that were meaningful. My favorite example of this being the one used in episode 11, when the shield hero busted out this metal ass coffin from the sky to take out the enemy before him. It was getting hard to pay attention to anything going on because of how annoying it was to see a bunch of characters the story itself made unlikable, but once I heard this track come in, I couldn't help but keep my eyes glued to the screen in awe. Prime examples like those are what really highlights Panda's ability to grab you for moments. However, while conducting a scene is something Kevin has shown to be adept at up until that midpoint, as the anime went along, I felt as though his effect on it wasn't enough to carry the show for me anymore. Episode after episode, week after week, the rising of the shield here wasn't showing any reason that it was good beyond its OST. It felt too generic. The characters are stiff and bland, and the action scenes were good to start, but only got increasingly bad. It had no redeeming quality. But the music in the background. <laughs> 